Hello dear students, welcome back to my channel Hilo Pharmacology. In today's session, let us learn about what is the role of beta blockers as anti-anginal agent. So coming to the examples of beta blockers, so we have examples like cardioselective beta blockers as well as the non-selective beta blockers. So what do you understand by cardioselective beta blockers? So cardioselective beta blockers are the one which acts on the beta 1 receptors. So these are called as cardio. selective cardio selective beta blockers if they are acting on beta 1 as well as beta 2 if it is blocking beta 1 as well as beta 2 it is called as non selective non selective so which is the example for non selective beta blocker so one important example for non selective beta blocker is the propranolol propranolol is the non selective beta blocker which blocks both beta 1 as well as beta 2 whereas metoprolol and atenolol are the cardio selective so these are the Cardio selective beta blockers, which mainly blocks the beta 1 receptors. Beta 1 receptors. So, if you take the beta blockers and compare with the normal person and a person who is having angina, so in such circumstances. So the effectiveness of beta blocker will be only marginal when the person is at rest. So their effectiveness will be more when the patient is exercising or during anxiety if he experiences any pain. So these beta blocker will going to decrease the cardiac work means beta blocker will going to limit the increase in cardiac work in such conditions. So coming to the mechanism of action of beta blockers as anti-anginal agents. So please remember these beta blocker will not dilate any of the coronaries. Please remember beta blockers will not dilate any of the coronaries thereby it decreases the total coronary blood flow, decreases the total coronary blood flow. Since it do not dilate the coronaries, so there will be, obviously, there will be decrease in the total coronary blood flow. So you may be wondering how these beta blockers will help in relieving the anginal pain. So these beta blockers will maintain the blood flow Please remember these beta blockers will maintain the blood flow to the ischemic endocardial region by two mechanisms. So what are those two mechanisms? So it will going to decrease the ventricular wall tension. So by decreasing ventricular wall tension, it will going to decrease the cardiac work. So it will going to decrease the load on the cardiac system thereby cardiac system requires lesser oxygen to function so it requires less oxygen consumption so thereby what happens when cardiac activity is reduced so there will be reduction in the heart rate there will be reduction in the inotropic action that means there will be decrease in the contractility and also there will be decrease in the mean blood pressure so whenever there is a decrease in the heart rate so as you know that the heart will receive its blood supply 
during diastole so decrease in heart rate will prolong the diastolic phase so thereby it improves the perfusion it improves the coronary perfusion which in turn increases as well as improves the subendocardial perfusion subendocardial perfusion on the other hand so there can be favorable redistribution from the non ischemic area to the ischemic area so this is the mechanism of action so basically these beta blockers will not going to dilate any of the coronaries vessels but it will going to decrease the ventricular wall tension please remember it will going to decrease the decrease the ventricular wall tension thereby it decreases the cardiac work which in turn requires lesser oxygen consumption and further leading to decrease in the heart rate decrease in the inotropic action and decrease in the mean blood pressure so decrease in the heart rate will going to prolong the diastolic period or the diastolic phase as you know that so heart will receive its blood supply more during the diastolic phase so decrease in the heart rate will prolong the diastolic period which in turn going to improve the coronary perfusion thereby there will be increased perfusion to the subendocardial region so coming to the classical angina so you can use the the beta blocker in case of classical angina please remember all the beta blockers can be used exception is you should not use beta blockers with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity what is the reason again so if you are giving a beta blocker which has got intrinsic sympathomimetic activity it will going to increase the workload on the heart so that's why you need to avoid the beta blocker which are having intrinsic sympathomimetic activity so what is the beneficial effect you are going to get following the administration of beta blockers so you will going to decrease the frequency of attacks you will going to decrease the severity of the angina and in addition you will going to increase the exercise tolerance among patients apart from this you should also remember that more commonly when we talk about beta blockers role in angina most of the times we are talking about cardio selective beta blockers so cardio selective beta blockers are preferred over the non selective beta blockers which will be blocking beta 1 as well as beta 2 so as we discuss so the example for non selective beta blocker is propranolol and the example for cardio selective beta blocker which will block only the beta 1 receptor which will block on the uh, only the beta 1 receptor it is beta 1 receptor so so you should be very careful so especially the non selective beta blockers are contraindicated in the use of variant angina so what is the reason for contraindication for use of beta blocker in case of patient having variant angina which is also known as prince metals angina or vasospastic angina so the beta blockers are contraindicated in particularly non selective beta blockers are contraindicated in case of variant angina as it will going to worsen the vasospastic condition how so since you are blocking both beta 1 as well as beta 2 and you know that you have beta 2 predominance in the blood vessels so if you are going to block the beta 2 receptor the vasodilatory action will be removed and what happens to the alpha receptor action there will be unopposed alpha receptor mediated vasoconstriction please remember there will be unopposed alpha receptor mediated vasoconstriction so which will going to increase the coronary spasm coronary spasm so this will in turn it will going to worsen it will going to worsen the variant angina and 
should also you should remember that it has got one more beneficial action so if you are using a beta blocker for a long term in case of patient who are having any ischemic heart disease ischemic heart disease what will happen so this will going to reduce the sudden cardiac death risk so beta blockers are known to decrease the sudden cardiac death that means to say it will going to decrease the mortality among ischemic heart disease patient and also please remember that you should not stop the beta blocker abruptly you should not stop the beta blocker abruptly or should not discontinue the beta blocker abruptly following or after chronic use so what is the reason again if you are discontinuing the beta blocker abruptly so there may be precipitation of increase in the severity of attack of angina as well as it can precipitate the myocardial infarction so on the other and there is one more important beneficial effect so which among the anti anginal drugs will prolong the life expectancy or which will going to increase the survival rate that means to say which is the drug which will going to decrease the cardiac remodeling among anti anginal drugs so your answer should be the anti anginal drug which will going to prolong the life expectancy which decreases the cardiac remodeling as well as which increases the survival rate will be beta blockers so beta blockers are only anti anginal drugs which will going to prolong the life expectancy which will going to prolong the life expectancy in the patient and also please remember it is a first line drugs so it is a first line drug and it is preferred in case of all cases of stable angina stable angina moving on to the further details so as you know that the beta blockers can be used in case of both unstable angina as well as non st segment elevation mi so please remember that whenever the patient is having unstable angina or non st segment elevation myocardial infarction so these are the two acute coronary events which can progress to st segment elevation myocardial infarction so you need to cut down or you need to prevent the progression of this type of angina into st segment elevation mi so if there is no any contraindication for the use of beta blockers beta blockers are used routinely routinely in use in case of stable as well as unstable and non st segment elevation mi so what is the role here so basically this beta blocker will decrease the myocardial oxygen demand and also it will reduce the risk of impending myocardial infarction as well as the sudden cardiac death and also you should remember that these beta blocker should be started started only after giving initial doses of nitrates as well as the calcium channel blocker to prevent the vasospastic response mainly to counteract the coronary vasospasm and also you should remember that you need to avoid or contraindicated where these beta blockers are contraindicated especially if the patient is having bronchial bronchial asthma so especially the non selective beta blockers are contraindicated if the patient who is having angina if he or she has got bronchial asthma in such individuals we will going to avoid the use of beta blocker as it may precipitate the bronchial asthma so in such patient you can prefer the cardio selective beta blocker which has got action only on the beta 1 receptors so this was about the role of angina in the treatment role of beta blocker in the treatment of angina so if you find this video useful to you please do subscribe to my channel i love pharmacology 
and do not forget to share and hit the like button for more updates on pharmacology thank you